Hello. Uh, today I want to look at this question and the difference between two different questions that seem so similar, but they're actually a little bit different. So of course their answer is going to be a little different. So sometimes you'll see when you're solving equations, uh, you'll see sine of an angle is equal to a negative a half. So you're solving an equation versus an inverse question, which is this one, sine inverse of negative a half is equal to what angle? All right, so remember that for inverses, in comes a ratio, you know, a number, and out comes an angle. Versus for the regular function, I call it regular just for emphasis, in comes an angle, out comes a ratio. So, um, but they almost seem the same. <laughs> However, they're just slightly different. So what is the difference? Okay. So I'm kind of labeling them A and B. So A is the inverse question and B is the equation. So if you look back at the videos, I, I ask you when you're first introduced to inverses to ask the question, to translate the question into like a verbal sentence. And so here where you have sine inverse of negative a half equals an angle, what that really asks for is for what angle in the interval and that's what's really key here. In the interval, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 or negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees, depending on what mode you're in, uh, is the y-coordinate, because it's sine, right, equal to a length of negative a half, right? So this, the fact that there's this interval is what really changes, makes this a different question from the equation that says, hey, take the sine, the sine of what angles would give me negative a half, right? And in that case, you're asking the question, for what angles in, well, from negative infinity to positive infinity, you're not restricted to this here, is the y coordinate negative a half. So I can see where they're almost the same, but it's this interval difference that's so important, right? So I'm gonna go into why they're so different, but I just wanna kinda, of, you know, quickly answer, well, how do I tell the difference? Well, here there's an inverse. In, in the first question that's an inverse question, it actually has an inverse symbol. It has a trig, trig equation and then the inverse, right? So that, there's that little negative one sign. And here we have an equation, there's no inverse in the question, all right? So that's how you can really tell them apart. Uh, and so you're actually just presented with that question like that as an inverse form. So now what I wanna do is just kind of address the why between the difference between A and B. So with A, if you remember, what happened is you have in this dotted function, you had you have the equation of sine, y equals sine x, so right here. And then you, you know that it fails the horizontal line test, right? So if I were to draw a horizontal line, it would fail like so many places. So the idea is because sine x, the equation y equals sine x, fails the horizontal line test, I know that this will not have an inverse that is a function, right? So that, so that I it will not happen that the inverse is a function where for each input there's only one output. So what happened then is we had to restrict the sine function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's this blue part here, right? And then once it's restricted, we could reflect that little piece of the graph in the line y equals x and get this red function y equals the inverse sine of x, right? So it's, here's the, uh, you can see they're equidistant from the, well, <laughs> my drawing's not fantastic, but sorry. But they're supposed to be equidistant from the uh, line y equals x. But that's why that happened, all right? And that's why in your calculator, when you go to do, uh, inverse sine of, let's say, negative a half, and I happen to be in, in uh, degree mode, you get negative 30, which you may find, well, that's weird. Why is it negative 30, right? Uh, and by the way, if you were in a different, sorry, if you're in a different mode, let me change the mode, radian mode, and you were to ask the same question, the only difference would be inverse sine of negative one divided by two. It'd be in radian mode, right? So that would be, if I take pi divided by six, but it's negative, okay? So it's negative, and again, it's negative because when you look at how you solve that, you're saying, well, 
where in from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is the y coordinate negative a half and that's at negative 30 degrees or negative pi over 6. And remember on a number line negative pi over 2 then negative pi over 6 we might be tempted to call that 11 pi over 6 because it's the same location but it's a different rotation and, and, and 11 pi over 6 is not in this interval. So the answer, that's why your calculator is programmed theoretically to correctly answer, give you an answer only from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And it'll only give you one answer. And it can only do that. Why? Because remember, it's so restricted, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's the answer to A. To B, let's see, let's go back. What was that question? Where you had what seems to be almost the same question, but you're saying now, Find all angles for which the sine of that angle is negative a half. Therefore, you're asking the question for what angles from negative infinity to positive infinity is the y coordinate negative a half? Well, that has a different graph. And that has this, right? You have a sine function that's infinite, as designated by the arrows. Here's the line y equal negative a half. And what, for what angles is this true? Well, here, 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 here. Here, here, it's infinite, right? There's an infinite number of angles that do that. So to answer that, what we usually do is we say, okay, I need to find theta, so let's undo the sine function. So let's take this inverse sine of both sides. So the angle I'm looking for is the inverse sine of negative a half, which your calculator will give you as negative 30 degrees or negative five or six, but in approximate form, like we saw. I think it was negative 0.52 something. And then now you have to compensate. You have to say, oh, okay, but where else is the y coordinate negative a half? And you're like, oh, here at 7 pi over 6, right? Or at 210 degrees. So then you would, after you found each solution, you're saying, oh, they're not equidistant, right? 7 pi over 6 and negative pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6 are not the same distance from each other. So here's how you come up with all the angles. You just say, oh, this solution plus 2k pi and this solution plus 2k pi. And that's it. Then you start, if, if they ask you for a specific interval, you start putting in values of k, which is an integer, and you get those values that f fall within that interval. Or for positive t negative infinity to positive infinity, you just provide these two, uh, what I call generators, and you'd get all the infinite solutions, all right? So that is the big difference between the two questions, right? And uh, the way you tell the difference, let's just recap that. The way you tell the difference is that in one question, you'll actually see the inverse symbol, right? The little negative one right after the trig function. And in this one, you won't, all right? Thanks so much for listening.